Academy was founded in 1960 by very eminent intellectuals, a number of them directly and indirectly responsible for the Manhattan Project and the nuclear weapons. It's very significant that there are about five or six resolutions that have just been gone through the, uh, uh, the General Assembly. How many years later? <laughs> uh, uh, how many, uh, 50 years after the NPT was signed and uh, 27 years after the end of the Cold War, which we knew abolished any possible rationale for these things and we're still trying to govern them. Uh, so that was a starting point. This, we are not a traditional academy. We're not divided on disciplinary boundaries. No silos here. Difficult to find walls and partitions even because the people who founded it were concerned about global social challenges. Initially, the impact and responsibility of science and technology because it was so significant a contribution during World War II that hey, we can't, be, we can't uh, isolate ourselves anymore and say we just worked in the laboratory and we're not responsible for the consequences. And the Academy has a very broad range of uh, work we've been doing from the inception uh, which after the end of the Cold War, when, I mean, in 60, a, a World Academy was something absolutely unique and uh, people coming and talking to each other from both sides of the Iron Curtain or even from Europe and the US was pretty unusual. Now it's a daily occurrence. So we have been working to really uh, re define ourselves in terms of what is the relevant work for a World Academy in the 21st century in the present conditions. And in 19, sorry, in 2013, we partnered with the United Nations in Geneva uh, on a one-day conference, uh, which we called New Paradigm for Human Development. And there we presented, not only we, but there were about 200 participants and many leading organizations, government, NGO, research and universities, partners, people we partnered with, looking at major governance challenges in the world. Uh, security, uh, uh, peace, economy, ecology, society, immigration, you know the whole list because it's what Millennium Project has also been, uh, uh, been working on. And we came to some conclusions about these broad areas of challenge that although they have their distinct and unique characteristics, they all have some fundamental things in common. Uh, one of which is they're all global in nature Two is that they're all evolving and changing at unprecedented speed. Three, that none of them can be addressed independently of the others. They're all uh, complexly interrelated and therefore solutions along narrow disciplinary lines, theoretically, in terms of institutions, in terms of policies, in terms of practical strategies, simply is inadequate to address these challenges. And the fact that for, very, for all of these reasons, not only no single discipline, but certainly no country is in a position in this globalized world to effectively address these issues from their own perspective. Even something so conventional as uh, employment, which we used to think was the economic theory and the economic models were all national models. How does a country reach full employment? But when you look at the factors that impact on employment today, you see about half of them are really dependent on the international environment. So, and that's true of, of everything else, which is more obvious like the environmental issues than it is with uh, employment. So, among those issues, we were looking at what are the common governance challenges. And we started a series of workshops which we held for some reason in Dubrovnik uh, on the Adriatic Sea, uh, about 12 workshops over the last five years, looking at various dimensions of this. Uh, we launched an international working group on the need for new economic theory policy and institutions 
and have conducted five international conferences and smaller working groups looking at different dimensions of that over the five years. We've had work on leadership, uh, work on education. We've had, we're now next week, no, next week, yes, next week, <laughs> next week having our third international conference on the future of education uh, that will be in Rio in collaboration with the then government of Brazil. We're not sure about that. the new one uh, and UNESCO uh, for all of Latin America on what are the radical changes needed in education. Uh, and, I'm, and we have spent a lot of time on the social processes that are necessary for governance. Uh, last year, the government of Romania established a new institution by law of parliament in which the academy is a direct partner to study the impact, it's a, an institute of advanced studies on the culture and civilization of the Levant region. And unlike most of the things that are associated with culture and civilization and uh, the great anthropologists that we have in the academy and elsewhere, the focus of this institution, though we're looking historically to understand how the whole Levant developed, our whole purpose is the future. And what have we learned? What have we learned about the contact and interaction and development and evolution of culture at the local, national, regional, and global basis? Because we are an evolving human global society. Uh, how do we uh, integrate the the losses that come from the merging with the uniqueness and the richness of diversity that comes from our interactions. So I, just to give you an idea that we've been looking at these issues from a very a wide variety of, uh, of perspectives. On the more narrowly, traditionally confined uh, concept of governance, we had a very interesting meeting in April in Dubrovnik on a three-day round table like this one uh, on democracy. And that was mainly a group of Europeans, uh, not entirely, but mainly the focus was on what's going on in Europe and of course by reference what's going on in this crazy place on the other side of the uh, uh, Atlantic. And we were equally eager to have a, a corresponding meeting here, and that will be at the end of this week. All of you who were invited, if you, uh, I, I think you've been informed about it in St. Augustine, uh, to look at, to understand the democratic processes and what is the future of democracy and what are the trends which we're all aware of now and, what, and what's the response we can give to them. And then, right after the Rio conference, we have a three-day workshop on global governance, again in Dubrovnik, where we'll be looking at the global dimensions of this, rather than the national and, and regional, or more than, not rather than, the uh, national and regional, regional dimensions. This meeting, I think it's very appropriate we come to the bank because you have been grappling with the, uh, the process of how do we improve governance of society to achieve practical, tangible uh, measures, largely relating to developing countries. I mean, that's the, the priority, though we can use it everywhere else as well. And I think the insights are as valid uh, for everywhere in different degrees. Just last Friday, we had a meeting at the UN. It's, uh, five years later, we were invited back to the UN to meet with the Director General about a new conference uh, on the implementation of the SDGs. And this is really a governance issue. It's not a governance issue in the narrow sense of uh, how do the national, what is the policies and laws of the just of the national organizations. How do we take goals which have been agreed on by 200 countries, targets that have been agreed on, how do we actually translate this and take it down and implement it in society when to a very large extent the results are gonna depend on not what government does, but what, how the society responds to that and what the other players, whether they're business or NGOs or just the, the ordinary uh, public does. 
And it, so in our view, governance is really a governance of the whole. It's not just what we do in uh, Congress. It's not just uh, what decisions governments make either in their own country or across the, it's a process of how do we govern the human community, our relations with each other, our relations uh, 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 with the resources we have. How do we utilize the resources that humanity has today? We have unprecedented resources we've never had. $250 trillion in global financial assets, most of it uh, circling the globe and not really impacting positively at least on contributing to human development. How are we going to govern the environment? How do we govern the vast problem challenges of immigration? Uh, how do, what is this process? What can we learn that's more fundamental to human beings coming together and learning as we have very slowly and often with repeated mistakes over generations and centuries, what have we learned about the process and the direction in which we're headed? And what can we do to accelerate it? So the conference proposal, which uh, uh, we're in the process of uh, working on with the UN is, what are the catalysts and accelerators for this process that we can build on what are the gaps, gaps in knowledge and in information, in policy and in institutions that we have to fill in order to? So this is very broad. I'm saying this a little elaborately to say the issues that we put on this agenda, it's a very ambitious agenda, or let's just say it's a very comprehensive agenda. What we hope to accomplish here is simply to make the best use of your presence and your minds. Uh, the Academy has gone through an evolution over the last five years, uh, from, or seven years, from, huh? seven. seven, from being more of a traditional uh, academy where we had academic presentations, wise, informed people coming and making long presentations. We gradually discovered that the best way that we can exploit the talent we have in the room is to be quiet and, 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 and listen. And we have succeeded in a very good measure in finding that we can create meetings like this where we pose questions. And instead of coming with all our pre-prepared answers, we think on those questions together and we respond to each other. It can be a little chaotic in the sense that uh, if you're looking for the concrete, what did we agree on and what does everybody uh, come out of it, it may uh, 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 be difficult to grasp at first. But it's very interesting because after we do some of these, for example, after the last one on democracy in Dubrovnik, uh, we didn't finish the, the, sec the third day with a set of conclusions and vote on them or anything. But when we circulated a draft document uh, and took in contributions from seven of the key participants in the meeting, it was remarkable of how much of a consensus we had on the essence, es essential insights. So for us, this is a learning process rather we're, than we're trying to teach somebody anything. We want to learn from this process, and we hope all of you do. And if we succeed in that, uh, we've got something more valuable. We have a couple of journals of the Academy, if you're not aware of them, Cadmus and Eruditio. These are open to you. We'd like to know your thoughts. We'd like to know not only what you get out of this meeting, but what you have thought and continue to think on the issues that we're grappling with. This is, we are an open network, uh, not, uh, there are no closed uh, doors. So please share with us your ideas, share with us your inputs, your suggestions, and by all means, we look forward to future opportunities to work with the Millennium Project and all of you. Again, thank you.